Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and a very happy St. Patrick's week to you all. We might as well make it a week at this stage. But St. Patrick's Day is coming up on Thursday the 17th of March and so I'm going to make my brown soda bread. You couldn't have a St. Patrick's week without having your brown soda bread, traditional Irish brown bread ready for the day. So that's what I'm going to cook for you today and I hope you enjoy. So I have St. Patrick here with me today while I'm baking and just for those of you who might not know St. Patrick is the saint who brought Christianity to Ireland many years ago and so this is a little children's book about St. Patrick so this is a beautiful little book and the ch children love looking at it when it's coming up to St. Patrick's Day so I must remember to leave it out I had to go searching there to find it and that's St. Patrick so let's get into our brown soda bread so my ingredients today for this are I'll need uh, wholemeal flour, plain flour, soda, bread soda of course, bread soda here, I need salt and I need sour milk. Now I don't have any sour milk, I just have regular milk here, but what I'm going to do is just add a few drops of lemon juice and just leave it for a couple of minutes and then I'll have my sour milk, which will be perfect for my brown soda bread. Now I'm going to start weighing out my ingredients. Now I'm going to weigh out my ingredients. I'm going to sieve some 100 grams of plain flour with a half a teaspoon of bread soda. Then I'll add in my wholemeal flour, which is going to be 300 grams of wholemeal flour. Make sure not to have any lumps of bread soda going into it. You know, don't want to take a bite into a lump of bread soda. Definitely not nice. Now I'm going to add in my wholemeal flour, and today I'm using this Little Mill Company plain wholemeal flour, and it's coarse stone ground and I'm going to have 300 grams of this. And I'm going to add in my half a teaspoon of salt and I'll get my wooden spoon. You know you have to have a wooden spoon when you're making Irish bread. In case you don't know back in the day the wooden spoon was used for far more than just baking. A child would get a whack on the bum with the wooden spoon if they weren't behaving properly. So if a, a child saw a mother coming with a wooden spoon, they were gone. <laughs> They'd run a mile. Anyway, I'm only joking. You don't need to have a wooden spoon to make brown bread. Any old mixing spoon will do. So now my milk is lovely and sour now. So I'm going to add most of the milk and mix it to a soft dough with a wooden spoon, as the ingredient says, and adding more milk if necessary. So it's going to be a lovely soft dough. I won't add it all just yet. Just the simplest thing to make is brown soda bread or wholemeal bread, you can call it. And you can make a soda bread with just plain flour too. Leave out the wholemeal flour and use 400 grams of plain flour. And it's still a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of bread soda and 250 mils of sour milk. Now I definitely need more milk in this. ball of dough comes together then you drop it out onto your floured surface and you're going to gently knead this dough and 
Now this is only a small loaf of brown bread. You could double the ingredients if you want to make a bigger loaf. Now a little bit more flour. I'm going to just knead it gently. It doesn't need too much work. And if your dough comes out too wet, you can always add a little bit more flour. So it's nice soft dough. Now, I'm going to flatten it into a round. Now, there we go. And I'm going to, of course, make the sign of the cross on my bread. which is the traditional Irish way of blessing your bread and giving thanks to God to have bread. And now I'm going to just put a little bit of the leftover milk on the top of the bread before I pop it in my hot oven. And the oven is at 220 degrees Celsius or 425 degrees Fahrenheit or gas mark six. this tray and into the oven and I'm going to leave it in the oven for about 40 minutes and then I'll show you then while the bed is bread is baking I just said I might give you a little overview of the life of Patrick if you want to skip this bit that is no problem at all but if not if you're interested I'll just give a quick look through this book so Patrick is taken into slavery. We are sure that Patrick li we are sure that Patrick lived, but we are not sure of the date or place of his birth. And as children, we were always told that it was Wales that St. Patrick was. But this says the most probable birthplace is Kilpatrick near Dunbarton in Scotland. So he had he was the child of Roman parents, and at the age of fourteen, he was taken away by raiders. And again, as children, we were always told that it was the Vikings that took him. He was taken to Ireland and his head was shaved and he was clothed in a sheepskin tunic and sandals. In his captivity, Patrick turned to God. As he took care of sheep, he prayed to God. He tells us, the love of God and his fear grew in me more and more as did the faith and my soul was, was roused so that in a single day I have said as many as a hundred prayers and in the night nearly the same. So he spent his days working and praying. Patrick had a message from God in a dream in which he was told to flee from his master and go to the coast. 200 miles away, he made the trip safely. He found some sailors who at first refused to take him with them, but after a silent prayer to God, they agreed, and he made his way home. Patrick's peaceful freedom was disturbed by another dream. In his dream, he saw the people of Ireland had heard and heard them crying out, We beg you, holy youth, to come and walk among us once more. Patrick's heart was willing, but he was not ready. He sought advice and was told to prepare for the priesthood. He met St. Germanius, the Bishop of Oxir, and put himself under his direction for learning and holiness. He was ordained a priest and was guided by St. Germanus for many more years. Pope St. Celestine sent a certain Palladius to bring the gospel to Ireland, but he died. Because of St. Germanus, the Pope told Patrick to get ready to embark for the mission to Ireland. First, he was ordained a bishop. Patrick landed in the north of Ireland, where he had been a slave. Legend has it that he was met by Dichu, um, a chieftain who drew his sword to slay Patrick, but his arm became rigid and he could not move it until he declared himself friendly to Patrick. He asked for instructions and was converted to the Christian faith. He donated a large barn which later became a church and a monastery. Patrick lived at the Hill of Slain on March 25th, arrived at the Hill of Slain on, the, on March 25th, 433. And then Patrick began his preaching. He soon met pagan priests. Legend tells us that the chief of these priests was able to raise himself high in the air by some magical power. But when Patrick prayed, he fell to the ground and was killed. There surely were miracles so that the high King Lyra 
followed Patrick to preach Christianity, allowed Patrick to preach Christianity throughout all Ireland. While the High King did not accept Christianity, many of his court did. Also at the Hill of Tara, the tradition st started that Patrick used the shamrock to explain the Trinity. To this day, the shamrock has been the symbol of Ireland, the Catholic nation. At this time, Patrick was about 45 years old. So the shamrock, as you might know, uh, is has three leaves. So Patrick explained that God is made up of three persons, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, and three be becomes one. We just have one God, but there's three parts to our God. But there were many chieftains and druids who tried to harm Patrick. One time Patrick was almost killed by a spear while he was travelling in a chariot. Many people are converted. Patrick's preaching reached the hearts of the people and he made progress in spreading the faith. We hear of him preaching in Kalala with all the people of the area present. The king, his six sons and 12,000 accepted the faith. He was also able to convert the two daughters of the, uh, the high king, Lyra. Patrick went north again to Ulster and there the chieftain named Dara allowed him to choose any site for a church. Patrick selected a hill in Armagh upon which he built a church. It is said that the present cathedral of Armagh is built on that same hill. In the district of Costello in County Mayo, he instructed Chief Ernask and his son Lorne. A church was built there and later on Lorne was in charge. Patrick suffered many trials in his missionary work and he carried on. But he tells us that he and his companions were captured and changed 12 times in one and one time sentenced to death. But by the power of God, he was able to overcome and the message of Christianity spread. A certain prince named Korotik plundered the country where Patrick had been conferring the sacrament of confirmation. He killed many on Easter. The next day, Patrick sent him a letter begging him to bring back the Christian captives. Patrick said that he was the Bishop of Ireland and that he expelled Korotik from the church and from Jesus Christ, whose place Patrick held until the prince would do penance and free the captives. This letter expresses Patrick's most tender love for his flock and his grief for those who had been slain. Patrick's piety. Behind Patrick's zeal as an apostle was a deep piety. Many times during the day he armed himself with the sign of the cross. He wore a rough hair shirt and slept on a rock. He refused precious gifts that were offered to him. His only desire was to bring souls to Christ. Prayer was Patrick's weapon. He would often go a to a distant place to speak with God. One of the best known places where he spent 40 days and nights in prayer and fasting and where he received a wonderful vision from God is Crow Patrick or St. Patrick's Mountain. And Crow Patrick is in County Mayo and it's on the coast and it's the most beautiful place to go and to pray and to climb. And there is a Sunday in July called Reek Sunday and that's where many thousands of people come from all over the country to climb Crow Patrick. And there's mass on the top of the mountain. My father has done it many, 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 many times. Um, I've only done it about, I'd say maybe three or four times but I'd love to do it again. But my father is such a fit, fit man. And uh, he w flies up and flies down. Patrick always gave till he had no more to give and he was happy to see himself poor with Jesus Christ. He knew that poverty and suffering and prayer would bring souls to God. Patrick worked miracles. By this time, Patrick had many followers. One of the first was Beninus. Forgive me for some of the pronunciations who was the son of a chieftain and who became his successor. Others were St. Oxillus, St. Isernis and St. Fiac, the son of, a chi of Chief Brehem. These zealous priests brought the life and doctrine of Christ to all. Besides the preaching of Patrick and his disciples, there were many miracles. The dead were raised, the sick were healed, the lame were cured, and many wells to this day named after Patrick claim a miraculous flow of water. Patrick travelled all over Ireland, staying in a place long enough to begin the faith and then he would move on. One of the keys to Patrick's holiness is his deep humility. He, he wrote a book called The Confessions in which he speaks about his sinfulness. He writes, I, Patrick the sinner, am the most ignorant and the least of the faithful. I was like a stone lying in mud and he that is mighty lifted me up. Patrick wrote his confessions as a proof of his mission. When he was old, 
It expresses a great desire of martyrdom. He confesses all his faults with sincere humility and praises the mercy of God shown him in his sinfulness. He writes that he desires to see again his own country and to visit his friends, but he will not leave his people. He tells us that he himself and all his companions have been beaten and put into prison because he had baptised the son of a certain king against the will of his father, but they were released after 14 days. In his confessions, Patrick says, I give unceasing thanks to God, to my God, who kept me faithful in the day of my testing. Today I can offer him sacrifice with confidence, giving myself as a, vic- a living victim to Christ, my Lord, who kept me safe through all my trials. You did it so that whatever happened to me, I might accept good and evil equally. Always giving thanks to God. God showed me how to have faith in him forever as one who is never to be doubted. He answered my prayer in such a way that, ignorant though I am, I might be bold enough to take up so holy and so wonderful a task and imitate in some way those whom the Lord had so long ago foretold as heralds of his gospel. I came to the Irish people to preach the gospel and endure the taunts of unbelievers, putting up with shame in my earthly travels, suffering many persecutions, even prison, and losing my birthright of freedom for the benefit of others. If I am worthy, I am ready also to give up my life willingly for his name. I am deeply in his debt, for he gave me the great grace that through me many peoples should be reborn in God, and then made perfect by confirmation. Then everywhere among them priests should be ordained for a people so recently coming to believe. One people gathered by the Lord from the ends of the earth. It is among that people that I want to wait for the promise made by him. Whoever tells a lie, he, he makes this promise in the gospel. They shall come from the east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Patrick says he lived in a constant danger and expected martyrdom, but he feared nothing because he put himself into the arms of God with great confidence. Before his death, Patrick wrote, It happened in Ireland that those who never had a knowledge of God, but until now always worshipped idols and things impure, have now been made a people of the Lord and are called children of God that the sons and daughters of the kings of the Irish are seen to be monks and virgins of Christ. By the time Patrick was 70, it could be said that all Ireland was Catholic and the church was firm, supported by bishops, priests and the churches. Never has hearsay tainted the Irish church. Patrick continued his mission all over the provinces of Ireland for 40 years. Worn out by heavy labours, he was given the last rites of the church by St. Tassach, he died at Saul, the place where he had built his first church, on March 17th, 461. Patrick's body was found there in a church of his name in 1185. Irish missionaries have brought Christ to the far corners of the earth. They founded the church in Australia and New Zealand and strengthened it in England and the United States. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland and the Irish. His feast is celebrated on March 17th. And here is a prayer to St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland. God, our Father, you sent St. Patrick to preach your glory to the people of Ireland. By the help of his prayers, may all Christians proclaim your love to all people. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And there is a quick run through the life of St. Patrick. And now we'll get back to our brown soda bread. Thank you for listening. And here's my delicious loaf of brown soda bread. I have it cut up here. I'm going to open it now in a second and I'll cut up a few slices and I will show it to you with the butter melting.
Thank you all for joining me in my kitchen. God bless you all. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. Bye. P.S. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. And please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Banak Tina Fela Porik. Slán!